<clears throat> Welcome back. It's What If Wednesday. And as you will notice, I'm by myself. It's Brandon here with you. Welcome to another What If Wednesday Inner Circle preview call. Um, Sean is out and about. He's making deals happen in the world uh, with his other company, BevGraph, which I know we've mentioned on these calls uh, and also in our, our challenges previously. So if you haven't heard about BevGraph, you'll hear a lot more about them coming up, uh, especially today. We have I have a little bit of news for you as far as, you know, what does everything we're talking about look like in the real world? I, I, it's cool to to talk about business and talk about business theory. That sounds like an MBA program, right? Nobody wants that. We don't we don't go to pay for MBAs here. We pay for real life experience. And that's what we talk about on the inner circle. So um, a little bit more on BevGraph right now coming up um, and then you'll hear more from sean in the future as these deals start to play out but we've had uh, a, cr a crazy week since we've been here last last wednesday and we have a lot going on so we're gonna get you up to speed here this week we're gonna recap where we've been for the past month we are wrapping up the first section of the harmonious business architecture uh, and we're gonna move on to section two now so we're gonna be talking about operate or execution a little bit more on that soon but let's start back at the foundation. So if this is your first time joining us, you've never seen my face before, good for you, right? But outside of that, if this is the first time you're hearing me say architecture and talk about business and harmonious, and you're thinking this guy is off his rocker insane, you're right. But that's what we do here. We're a little bit insane. So I'm just going to bring up my screen real quick, and we're going to go over what is this architecture that I'm talking about. So architecture, right? We have to lay the foundation. This is truly the foundation that your business is built on. It is the, the system and processes and how everything intersects in your business to work together to build a harmonious business. If you have a business that is dissonant, that is you have some parts working, some parts not working, you have dissonance and it doesn't, dissonance in music is, is, doesn't sound good. And that's why we went with the acronym of harmonious. A business that is working together, playing together nicely, it sounds good. It runs good. It feels good. It's There's no stress on you as the business owner, the entrepreneur, or the operator. That is our goal in running any business. And where we got this from is we looked at where was business created? Well, the Industrial Revolution is really where modern day business was created. And it was this system that was put into place that we've all just kind of rolled with for the last hundreds of years. Well, it's a broken system. It wasn't founded on these core principles that everything needs to work together. Everything in typical business, especially the Fortune 500 and big business, the companies we all model, right? They are siloed. They have the marketing department over there. And then they have marketing or not marketing. They have HR over there. And the strategic planning happens in some executive boardroom on the 92nd floor. These things don't, these silos don't talk to each other. And what, what we realized and what Sean has realized and what we've talked about on, on this show and in our inner circle is that's not right. You can't run a business with different departments that don't talk to each other. Or the classic example is where you have sales and marketing who hate each other and they're constantly at each other's throats. Imagine a family. Now, this may be very real for some of you, but imagine this anyway, a family that all hated each other and they were at each other's throats constantly. Is that a harmonious family? No, I'm not saying a business is a family, but I'm saying that is the concept. If you have different parts of your business that don't like each other, don't talk to each other or don't communicate in any regular fashion, you have a business that is set up to fall apart. So what do we have? We have these traditional disciplines in business. You know them as what's on the screen here, strategic planning, time management, processes, and automation. This all sounds super boring, right? Sounds like an MBA program. Yeah, that's not what we're about here. The problem is, as I just mentioned, that these areas are not 10 individual bubbles. You see the little tiny lines on the screen that connect these bubbles? That is the magic. That is the leverage to grow and scale any business. So if you have your strategic planning happening in some boardroom on the 92nd floor, and that never gets down to your marketing department, how does your marketing department know how to speak about your brand and what they put out into the public? They don't. And that happens every single 
day in the Fortune 500, the Fortune 50, and on Main Street. Most commonly on Main Street because a lot of small businesses don't even know half of these exist because they're artists turned entrepreneurs. If that's you, welcome to the club. That's how we all got started. That's what we're here to fix. I too myself was an artist turned entrepreneur and I had to learn a lot of this stuff the hard way. We exist at What If to shine the light on all of these different areas of business, connect these silos and help you, the small business owner, the main street business and the entrepreneur grow and scale your business effortlessly. We do that by showing the leverage between the hidden links and teaching you this architecture so that you can put it on your business and you can grow very, very quickly at whatever pace you want to whatever scale you want. That's the other beautiful part of this. It's not, oh, this only works for businesses doing 100,000 to 200,000 in revenue or only from 10 to 20 million in revenue. No, this is an architecture. It's context. There's so much content in the world. We have talked about that at nauseum on this show. There is a new guru on the internet every single day. I even look like that here doing this very thing right now, but that's not what this is. We are not giving you content. We are, we're just telling you also how to look at it, where to put it. That's the context part. Think about content is water and context is the glass. If you have water with no container, it goes everywhere. If you have a vessel to put that water in, it can stay beautifully contained. You can drink it. You can use it to water your plants. You can put it wherever you want. You can direct it. You can fill it up. You can empty it out. That's what's missing in this world is the context. And this architecture on the screen here and these little tiny lines are the context that's missing for you in your business. And we've seen it time and time again. I'll give you concrete examples from stuff that's happened this week in just a few minutes of how this applies to your business. But first, let's eradicate these old, boring MBA terms, and we're going to turn them into the harmonious architecture. So we have taken all of these terms, strategic planning, we call navigate, project management, operate, and so on down the list. We use fun terms. Business should be fun. That's what we believe at What If. If you've seen me and Sean ever do anything together, it is centered on fun. If you don't have fun in your business, it will eat you alive. The business world can be stressful it can be very hard. You know that. I know that. You got to have fun. And that's the first thing that we're going to teach here at What If. And we harp on having a good time. So that's why we chose some of the language that we did. It also spells out a very beautiful acronym in harmonious. You should want to have a harmonious business. Think about what that's saying. So here's what that looks like in no particular order. The acronym is not in order. Um, and there's no one particular order for every business, but all of these 10 elements are present in business. So now that you have the background of what is the harmonious architecture, where have we been? So last week we talked about navigate. As a matter of fact, for the last four weeks, we have been talking about navigate, uh, typically known as strategic planning. And this is made up of things like your mission, your vision, your core values, both as a, a human being and as a company. And how does this stuff show up in the world? So we spent a lot of time on Navigate and that was on purpose. That was because what we see is a lot of the times when our clients come in and they take the bad assessment. Um, that is our eight minute diagnostic tool. I put the link up on the screen here um, if you'd like to go take it. So it's whatif.com slash bad assessment. That's how we analyze where your business is. We can tell very quickly where the weaknesses is, where where the weaknesses are, where the strengths are, and where those links might be broken. That's super important for us um, as consultants and as fractional COOs because we need to understand what's broken. A lot of consultants will come in if you've ever hired a consultant, and they'll say, "We're going to immediately fix sales. You need more leads." Well, how do we know that? And, and also, how do we know if your sales are? You may have enough leads they're not converting into sales because something else is broken so that's besides the point but you can see kind of where this path goes so when we spend time on navigate a lot of the times when people take the bad assessment they have a very low score or they have a falsely high score because they don't understand truly what those uh, different areas the mission vision core values need to actually say and look like if you if you have ever hired a consultant 
um, or you've taken a maybe a course on how to create a mission statement, how to create a vision statement. A lot of the times you'll get like really pretty words on a piece of paper and then you share that with your team and they're like, those are really pretty words. And where does it get you? Nowhere. It gets stuck up on the wall. Maybe it's in your email signature. We strive to increase the shareholder value in our company. Nobody cares. Your shareholders don't even care about that, let alone your employees. No one's going to fight for that mission. So what we do is we spent the past four weeks really diving into each of those individual segments, the mission, the vision, the core values, and on the inner circle call that happens from noon to one Eastern right after this live preview, we spent time working in those areas, deeply in those areas for our clients and having them develop mission statements, vision statements, core values that actually resonate with who they are, how they show up in the world and things that their employees can get behind and actually run into battle. It's a, that's a metaphor that's overused in business. But if you don't have a mission statement of vision and core values that are in alignment with your company and your culture, the people that work in your company, they will never, ever go to battle for you. They won't want to show up to work. It'll be new and fun and exciting in the beginning because it's a new job, right? But it will wear off. And those are the things that when times get tough, especially like the economy and the and the, the world situation that we're in right now, when things get tough, if you don't have the foundation and the navigation of your business set up properly, your employees lose heart, your business slowly declines, and all of a sudden, you can't make payroll. And that is a very real scenario. It's one that I've seen a number of times. And a lot of the times it comes back to that section. So we spent four weeks on it. We got things moving in the right direction. And as I mentioned earlier in this show, we had it actually show up in the real world uh, with Sean's company, BevGraph, as I mentioned. He, he called me the other day and I won't share too many of the details. We will go into detail on this in the in the inner circle in just a few minutes but he shared details with me about a massive opportunity that came their way as a company and the initial reaction from everybody at the table was excitement as it should be i mean we're talking really really big numbers in, in dollars and world changing opportunities and without the architecture without understanding how everything intersects it's common for entrepreneurs to only see the positives. We are optimists by nature. That is, if you are an entrepreneur, you are most likely an optimist. You think you can do anything and you can probably do it in half the time that it really takes. I've, I'm guilty of that all the time. That's where the architecture comes into play. You have to stop, pause, and analyze everything. If we chase this opportunity, how does that affect all of these other areas? Well, this happened in real time. And the, the, the short story here is it was very interesting to see how this plays out on such a massive scale, because when you're talking about potentially hundreds of millions and even billions of dollars, it is very hard, I promise you, to pause and say, wait, how does this, this affect us? But if you don't do that, what could end up happening is you go down a path that's not in alignment with your company at all. So let's play two different paths out here. Let's say, regardless of BevGraph aside, just company ABC. Company ABC traditionally is on path A. They have this giant opportunity over here, this shiny object to chase path B. They can go in whichever direction they want. They can stay on the road they're on, or they can chase this new opportunity. Let's say it's time for a change. They've analyzed everything or it's spur of the moment decision, they decide to go with opportunity B. Well, what ends up happening is as you get down this path, you start to split as a company. You start to get further and further away from your initial mission. When that happens, you have to look back at the company you built, the culture you have in place, the people you have in place, the systems, the core values and the mission of the company are from your original path. Now that you've chased this new shiny opportunity, you have a company that is doesn't look even remotely close to where you started. So your team members, even though they were rock stars when you were down this other path, 
Now they're looking at this company like, this isn't what I signed up for. I have no idea what I'm doing. I was making widgets that I really loved before, and now we're flying airplanes. It's not even the same thing. That's a, dr a drastic example, but it happens every single day as entrepreneurs. We chase these shiny objects. And if you don't have the architecture in place, the lens in place to look at your business to say, okay, how does this tie into everything else? Is this the path I want to be on? Is this the company that I've created? You don't really always make the right decisions. And that can end up costing you your company, your culture, it could, or worse, your bank account. You could, you could go completely out of business because you chase an opportunity, a shiny object. And that's how this, this really comes to play in real life. It's not, like I said in the beginning, this is not theory. This is truly happening in business every single day. If you've never looked at that, looked at it like that, I hope now this shines some light on how this actually comes up. A lot of people overlook the mission, vision, core values because it's like, ah, we'll get to that one day. It doesn't really matter. No, this is foundational to make actual everyday decisions in your business. If you don't have this part right, you can't make good decisions. You can't make hiring decision. You can't make um, expense decisions, operational decisions, nothing. Your business is technically at a standstill until you have all of that ironed out, or you will just go wherever the shiny object road takes you. And that's a very dangerous place. So last week on the inner circle, we also had one of our members that I just want to shout out because it was an amazing moment for us uh, to see someone have this, this aha realization. This was someone, I won't use any names, but if you're inside the inner circle, you will hear more about this today, where she has hired consultants in the past. She has a unique business. And after a few minutes of talking, uh, we were trying to figure out, last week we were talking about tying your, your mission, vision, core values together. And she was new this particular week. We were talking about you know, what is your, your vision? Like, what is your company chasing? Where are you going? So we were able to ask a few questions, dig a little deeper. And after about four questions, she finally said, you know, I've hired a lot of consultants in the past, but I feel like you get me, you see me and you understand my company. That is a powerful realization. And all we did was ask the questions really that are on that bad assessment, but and then frame them in a way that makes sense to both her and her customer. That's the most important part. Her customer, her, and her internal employees. When you can make your vision speak to all these different people who your company touches, that is a powerful mission and vision. And that's how you can lead your company effectively. So that was just a really cool moment that I wanted to share from the inner circle last week. If you want to learn more about the inner circle, if you want to join us, um, we do, if you go to what if.com slash inner circle, like you see here on the screen, um, we have, uh, currently we have an offer 30 days free in the mastermind. We want you to come in, check it out. If you don't get immense value in 30 days, if you don't start to see your business growing in 30 days, just peace out. We're not the, the people for you. I'm confident that you know we've never had that happen. So I'm confident that you've come in, you will grow your business, you will get a lot of value from this. And that's why we're here. We're here to disrupt the gurus of the world who say that they are the end all be all solution to growing your business. But all we're really gonna talk about is sales or marketing or HR. They obviously can't, we don't jive with that because they don't, they only fit in one area of the architecture. So we're here to disrupt that mentality and say, no, what you need is context. You have the content. Roll with us in the inner circle. We're going to have fun. I told you we like to have fun. So join us. Join us for the 30 days free. We'd love to see you there. Um, and maybe you can have an aha moment like that too. So I also want to talk about where are we going this week. So I told you we're moving on from navigate mission, vision, core values. Now we're getting into operate, which is execution traditionally. Now execution, we look at a little bit differently um, than probably a lot of people in the rest of the world. And one of the things we're going to talk about in depth in the inner circle today, and probably going to continue a little bit into next week as well. It's what is it, what is your company chasing? How are you getting there? And how do you know that you will achieve what you're chasing? A lot of times this falls under your goals, right? And I think a lot of people, when they hear the word goals, it's, they have a reaction that's one of two general ways. It's, oh, I set goals all the time. I love goals. Or, 
uh, that's kind of a foo-foo word that everybody uses and just means you have big dreams. Well, I used to think, honestly, the latter, where it, it was a word where you just, you can put anything on the piece of paper. And I've seen a lot of people do this where they're like, I want to be a billion dollar business by the end of this year. Do you have a process to get there? Do you even have steps to achieve that? You, you did $4 in revenue this year. How are you going to get to a billion in, by the end of this year? A lot of people set their goals incorrectly. That's not exactly what we talk about in operate um, in terms of execution, but we are going to talk about how do you break your year down and how do you get the most done and put a step-by-step -step plan in place. We use a method called the 12 week year, which uh, we did not invent ourselves, but the way we implement it is going to be a lot different than you've ever heard before. So we're going to discuss that. We're going to break down your goals into step-by-step actionable strategies to make sure not only do, do you have the best chance of achieving your goals, but you can actually go beyond them and faster and not in one year. We're going to compress the timeline. Other things we're going to talk about today are what is the, what software you're leveraging to use this um, or to achieve your goals and what does your calendar look like? So I, we hear so many people, um, especially on the goal setting and the software side where they try to get you to use their program. Well, at what if we are firm believers that we are tool agnostic? I don't care what calendar you use. I don't care what software you use, what email, what CRM. It's whatever works for you. But what we have to figure out is, again, how do we leverage what tools you use and you like to get you maximum results? So we're not going to tell you you have to use this one goal setting planner or software you have to use this calendar tool or this note taking tool none of that we're going to figure out get you a plan for what are you using how are you using it how is it effective or not and then we can switch but how do you leverage your current life and your current setup to get you wherever you want to go in terms of your goals we're going to talk about all of that we're going to go in depth um and that's that's a little bit of an overview of of the operate and execution um, in the in terms of the what if way and the what if architecture. So that's on inside the inner circle this week. Super excited to dive into that. Now, before we wrap up here, um, we were on both myself and Sean were on a podcast yesterday. Um, huge shout out to Harvey Tuck. He runs the franchise show. It was over. It was a live stream on LinkedIn. Um, we had an amazing time. He had an amazing, amazing room of uh, participants and attendees who were blowing up the chat and they had so many great questions. If you couldn't tell by the title of the show, we were talking about franchising. Now, I, if you haven't heard before, I do have a background in franchising as both a uh, part of a franchise and I turned my most recent business into a franchise. I obviously didn't pursue that path for reasons that we discussed on that show, but it was a really cool discussion around the traps of franchising. And there was a couple things that stood out to me in particular that I just wanted to share really quickly because it really ties into what we're talking about here with the what if architecture and, and how you set your business up for success and growth. A franchise by nature should be set up to scale, right? It is the same brand multiplied different across different locations, across a country, a state, or internationally, whatever that brand may be. So you would think by nature they're set up to scale, right? Well, wrong. And a lot of the comments validated what we were saying about that. Um, so a couple of the things that, that were uh, takeaways, which I have my notes on over here, is that when you're researching a franchise, and this is applicable to whether you want to be a franchisee or even if you want to start your own business, you need to have this lens. The architecture provides a lens to look through at how this business operates. And there were so many ahas yesterday in the comments from people who maybe they've been in franchising, they got burned, they fell into one of these traps, or they, you know, they were thinking about franchising, they got cold feet, something didn't feel right, but they didn't really know why. We were able to shed a light on that because when you have a lens to look at any company through, whether it's your company or a company you're going to invest in, a franchise you're going to buy into, or a business model you're going to start. If you have this lens, the architecture is power in that you can see 
which of these 10 disciplines that company is really strong in, which of the 10 disciplines you are very strong in as a person, where you match up and if it's a good fit. So first thing was first, we talked about how uh, core values need to be in alignment. Like we've been discussing for the past four weeks, if your core values are not in alignment with that, that brand's core values or the franchisor's core values, you should immediately stop the discussion. That was powerful. That was a big aha for a lot of people in the audience because they, uh, one person, I remember even saying that they were butting heads with the franchisor. And of course, you're not going to succeed because you're constantly in a war with somebody, but you're technically on the same team. That's like on a football team. If the quarterback and the head coach hate each other because they have a core value mismatch, they're not going to succeed and play well together. So you have to be in alignment on that foundational level. See how everything's coming back? Again, that's what we're talking about here. Um, some of the other things that were that we talked about, again, where the architecture really shows up is falling into the hype trap. There's a lot of times, especially with franchise, you get all hyped up, you go to the discovery days and it, they share the beautiful numbers and I'm going to be a millionaire and I'm going to work two hours a year. It's going to be great. Well, you have to have a framework and a context to dive deep, look inside of, of that business in particular, but also any business. That's the whole point here to say what's working, what's not working, what is true about what they're saying and what's not true. And this is any business model. You, you can go scroll on any social media platform, whatever platform you're watching this right now. If you go scroll on whatever reels, shorts, whatever you want to call it, Go see how long it takes you to find somebody claiming that they have found the end all be all business model that you can do from your pajamas in one hour a day and be a millionaire. I'll wait. It won't take you very long. It might take you 30 seconds. That's what we're talking about here. If you don't have a lens to analyze what you're looking at, what someone's telling you against reality and against what's actually true, you will fall for every scam in the book. And franchises can often look like a scam because of that. So can any business. I had a situation recently where uh, someone purchased my business that I've discussed again on this show and was expecting to just have it run itself and not actually be there as the leader and the guide to the business. Well, I won't share the details of what happened just yet. I will on the inner circle. So join us there if you want to get the inside scoop. But let's just say it wasn't that good because this person did not follow the architecture and the business model that was set up for success. And a couple of the key pieces fell. Well, when that happens, when you disregard the architecture, you set yourself up for failure. So those are my takeaways from the franchise show yesterday. Again, thank you. Huge shout out to Harvey Tuck for hosting us, hosting us as what if on the show. We're about to head on over to the inner circle. I hope to see you there, whatif.com slash inner circle. If you have any questions, please reach out to us. We want to connect with you. Drop your comments below. We want to see what you're thinking about your business. Where is your business? Do you want to take the bad assessment? We're happy to send it to you and give you a full analysis, a comprehensive analysis of your business currently. We're headed into rough economic waters. We're already there. We're only going to get worse. We want to help you through it. And that's the whole point of the inner circle. So we want to see you there. Can't wait to see you next week. Join us live on the Inner Circle Preview Show next Wednesday, What If Wednesday. And right now, I'm signing off. Going to hop on over there, and we'll see you in the room next time.